Welcome on to the Final Furlong podcast for our day one preview of the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. Willie Mullins has been the leading trainer at Cheltenham for the last five years. And given the firepower that he's got on Tuesday, he may very well have leading trainer wrapped up by day one. To preview the best bets, we are joined by the manager of the National Hunt side of Chelsea Thoroughbreds and top presenter for Race Day TV, Ella McNeil, and top pundit, and the stats expert, the man who's got all the trends, all the analysis, everything that we need to beat the bookmakers, Ben Aiken. Welcome to both of you. Ben, we're going to start with you, Supreme Novice Hurdle. Willie Mullins heads the betting, mystical power in a first-time hood. Mark Walsh riding for JP. Tully Hill, Paul Townend on board. Bookmakers can't decide which of these two should be favourite. But where are you looking for the Supreme Novice Hurdle? Yeah, um, as always, a couple of trends for people to factor into things first. Uh, last 15 winners of the race all had an official rating of 139 plus. Anything rated below that, zero from 93, only four places. Uh, 10 in the last 11 actually has an official rating of 148 plus. So not surprising, being a race that she knows already with a lofty sort of rating come out on top. Uh, also worth considering, 14 in the last 15 winners, one or were beaten no more than two lengths last time out. Uh, one from 94 and only six further places for those that did not meet that stat. Uh, 24 of the last 26 Supreme winners, one or beaten no more than two lengths last time out. So it is a generally strong race, the Supreme for trends and stats. Uh, that two I mentioned, Probably the strongest ones that I concentrate on. Mystical power, as you say, uh, one of those that head the market. I'm not actually, I'm a bit surprised by the first time Hood. Wasn't expecting anything to be tweaked there, but uh, he's a horse that is easy to be drawn to. Uh, Mullins won the Moscow Flyer Hurdle at Punchestown in January with him. It's a race that he has a history of sending some of his top novices to. Uh, a list of horses he has sent there. Impair, A Pass, Dysart, Dynamo, Ghetto Bird, Min, Duvan, Vatur, Mikhail, De Hagene. So clearly, he has mystical power, high in his thoughts for Cheltenham. Uh, I think that win must have confirmed he was as good as he probably already thought he was. Naturally, you'd hope he'd be high class. His dad's Galileo, his mum is Annie Power. Uh, Add more pressure on the horse. He's owned by three small-time owners in McManus, Magnair, and Brucci. So he's. Uh, I hope they stay in the no game. Pressure. Yeah, no pressure on the horse. Uh, the horse not feeling any pressure. Obviously, he's. I think he's been impressive with regards to winning margin of his races. Maybe not quite so on his jumping, but I think Mark Walsh has possibly just been trying to teach him to sell in this race. So I think that's possibly caused the scrappy jumps we've seen at times. Not something I'd be overly concerned about. You know, he's a, a novice at the end of the day. They make mistakes. I think the important thing is he's still been strong at the end of his races, I'm guessing. Maybe that's why the hood's gone on. Maybe he's still not quite as settled as they want him to be. Um, but I, I think he deserves his place at the head of the market. It doesn't look a, a vintage supreme probably, but mystical power, he does also fit the same profile as Willie Mullins' previous six winners of the race. Mullins has sent 42 runners to the Supreme since 2007. His winners all fitted the following. Two to four starts in the current season, two to four hurdle starts. Uh, previously won at least at Class 4 level and one last time out. Mullins runners fit in that profile. There are six wins, two places from 15 qualifiers in the Supreme. Mystical power fits that, so he takes plenty of boxes for me. Tully Hill actually also fits that previous Mullins Supreme winner's uh, stat, so as further strength to his Supreme team. Only time he's disappointed so far came Hurdle debut, sent him over 2 miles 6. I thought it was an odd starting point for him. Uh, been much better since dropping back to 2 mile trips. Now I think Tully Hill, he's probably going to be even better when he goes chasing. But Supreme it has been an excellent breeding ground for future chasers. So it's not a negative that I think he's going to be a chaser. A possible slight concern that Tully Hill, he's by Martelline, uh, his offspring at Cheltenham, over two mile four or less. Two wins from 62 starts, 75% below expectation. Uh, only a query, I say. That's not a hard and fast, he's not going to win because he's by Martelline. But, you know, it's there's a tight at the head of the market and Splitting hairs, maybe, but yeah, it'd be a small concern is that he's buying Martelline. So, of the two, Mystical Power, yeah, I think he is the one for me. Um, 
like a lot of these races that we will be covering, you'll be covering, Mullins holds the keys here. It's mystical power for me. Um, of the other at the head of the market, Firefox, <laughs> I'm not convinced by him personally. Uh, I think too much has been made about that win over Ballyburn December. He had race fitness that day over the Mullins horse. He was able to dictate things as he pleased as well. So I'm not sure about Firefox. I also noted Gordon Elliott. He's a 10 novice winners at the festival. Only one of them was stepping down in the trip from their last start. Again, only a minor query, but I said things are tight at the head of the market. So I would say Mystical Power is the one I don't have queries about. Boringly, that's what I'm going with for the Supreme Mystical Power. Funny enough, I was sent a stat last night about Gordon Elliott's horses at Cheltenham. I think he's two from 55 and minus 40 quid for horses dropping down in distance. And obviously, it's pretty yeah. well documented at this point that. It's since the 90s in tourist attraction for the last time a horse won the Supreme Novice Hurdle having blown out last time out and, and not placed. So there's a fair bit to overcome there. Um, that race at Ferry House did also turn into a sprint finish, which really suited him and didn't suit Ballyburn. And Ballyburn's or yeah. are in the 140s yeah. and 150s since, I don't think. I think he caught him cold that day. Fact of file, Tully yeah, Hill, a number yeah. of others were all beaten. First time out for Willie, I'm not sure you can take that form literally. That being said, though... Maybe, because we haven't talked about it beforehand. Maybe Ella McNeil is about to come in here and tell us, Firefox is the nap of Cheltenham. Ella, who do you like? I mean, I really like Firefox, but all the stats have now blown that out the water. Sorry, Gordon. So, I was, all my Firefox uh, lines up my sleeve, but now, uh, no, I, I think you've covered a lot there. Um, I'll go for an outsider, tell her the name. Um Always fancied this horse. I backed him at 20s, I think. Um, there's been months of money for him now. I think he's 14s here. Um, I think Ben's in flying form, winners over the weekend again. Um, I think I heard Ben say that he's never really had a horse in his yard like that in, in a sense that he's an ultimate professional, does everything that he's asked for and is very straightforward. And he said he was reminiscent of, of a similarity with the horse like Willoughby Court. So um, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, he was 14 lengths between him and Lucky Place in that grade two. Um, he's ultra consistent. I think if you look at his form figures, it's one, two, one. He pulled up that day. Um, I think you can put a, a line through that. Um, the ground was very hot, uh, set, heavy and soft um, in the Tolworth Upper Aintree. So I think you can put a line through that. And I would I would worry, you know, with all this rain coming, that maybe the ground wouldn't be absolutely to his liking. But I think he's got a really nice each way chance. Um, he was so dominant um, on his last win. And I think he's got a lovely, yeah. What is the current status with the ground? Because yesterday it was saying good to soft on the Racing Post. Now it's switched back to soft again. And I was told it's been raining. Well, it was definitely raining yesterday at Cheltenham. Yeah, I heard they got seven mils overnight. So um, I think, and it's going to rain, I think. All, well, it's raining all, I'm not f that far from Cheltenham and it's, it's raining all morning. So <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it's testing conditions there. Okay, that's music to my ears because I found it really difficult to split these Mullins horses. Paige Fuller's race IQ data is fascinating. Uh, this does not mean that the horse can't win, but if you watch Tully Hill's point to point, his jumping was atrocious that day. Clearly a big engine, as Ben was saying, Ella agrees. But <laughs> Paige's race IQ data, Tully Hill gave away six lengths plus to no flies on him last time out, mainly due to him losing 5.18 miles per hour at his hurdles. No flies on him was losing 2.28 miles. Now, he still buried him by nine lengths. But surely Mystical Power is a better horse than no flies on him. And Slade Steel definitely is. Now, his jumping needs to brush up a little bit as well. But I think this race is going to suit him perfectly. He buried King of Kingsfield on debut. That horse is now favorite for the county hurdle and has been grade one placed. He's beaten Lecky Watson in a two mile four hurdle. Every preview I listen to, anytime there's somebody from the Mullins camp on there, they're always saying, oh, Lucky Watson will go close in the potato race. That's a horse that we think a lot of. Like you just keep hearing what a solid horse he is and he beat him fair and square. And then the last day he's beaten seven lengths by Ballyburn. I think that's far more valuable form than beating Jigoro by seven lengths or nine lengths. Um, and he was beaten seven lengths by him in a bumper last year. So I'd say what's happened is they've both improved. It's just Ballyburn is already here for those watching on YouTube and Slade Steel is here. 
Classical Dream, Like a Butterfly and Brave Inca, they were all last minute switches to the Supreme from the Bering Bingham or Gallagher Novice Hurdle. It'd be interesting to see if the Gallagher brothers are there to hand out the trophy. Um, he's top rated on time four. Uh, they won't be, won't be together, am it? Yeah, they'll, we'll have to keep them they apart. Don't each other. Like Noel can know. hand over the trophy. That's not Liam, happen. Liam can be there on ITV giving it, giving it socks, and Noel <laughs> can be on racing TV or vice versa. But he's top on RPRs. He's top on uh, time form, and isn't he the most officially? He's the third highest rated horse in the race officially. Tully Hill, interestingly, has the officially highest rating in the race. I just don't think Tully Hill jumps well enough. I think Slate Steel will pick him up, particularly in this ground. Seven to one is available. And this is a cracking bet. Um, I, I'm, I'm going with him. I think he's a really, really solid bet here for Henry de Bromhead and Rachel Blackmore. Um, I, I honestly cannot pick which of the two Mullins horses will come out better. I think there's positives for Mystical Power. There's also some negatives. And there's definitely negatives for Tully Hill, but he's got an engine and his running style will be suited to the race. He'll be out in front, but he might just tow Slade Steel into it. So Slade Steel for me, tell her the name for Ella and Mystical Power for Ben. There is your TriCast for the opening race. To the My Pension Expert Oracle Trophy Novices Chase. The favorite is Gaelic Warrior. Okay. First time hood, Paul Townend will ride. Ile de Tomp, Danny Mullins, Love and Life gets to ride him again. Uh, found a 50 for Jack Kennedy and Gordon Elliott. A five to one shot. Hunter's Yarn will have Daryl Jacob on board. Um, Colixios, well backed and has been talked up on this show quite a few times in the last couple of weeks. Now a 13 to two shot from a double figure price. Ella, who do you like in the Arkle? Um, I've always been a fan of Founder 50. Um, all, all over him since day one. Um, I think he's an out and out two and a half miler and I think a fast paced, stamina based Arkle will suit him down to a T. I think he's the most consistent in the market. I think he's slightly underrated. I think he just got caught for a bit of toe against Ilete Tomp in the uh, in the Irish Arkle at the Dublin Racing Festival. I don't think he's done a lot wrong. He's been behind horses like Iron Maximus in the Drimmore. Obviously, we know how good he is. I think he's got a mass- massive engine. I think he's a two and a half miler all day. And I think if Jack can utilise his stamina and ride him prominently, I think it will take something very good to beat him. I do think Gaelic Warrior is the classiest horse in the race, but I'm sorry, I just, at that price, there's there's no way I'm touching him. Um, I think if, you know, he's dropping back in trip for Gaelic Warrior and things happen very quickly in an Arkle, and I think if he puts his foot wrong, then he's in trouble. So um, I think found 50 for me. Um, he's not done a lot wrong, and I think he's the most consistent. Ella, did you incept my mind? because <laughs> either you have stolen uh, my thoughts or you planted them there and you're the one who got me so obsessed with Founder 50 and I can't really work out which one <laughs> we're basically in sync here copy, paste, everything Ella said Founder 50 is a crack in bed and now that Phoenicia Williams has taken out Jello, first of all thanks a bunch Phoenicia, that's the 50 to 1 and 66 to 1 in tatters <laughs> but secondly yeah. he's out of the way so we don't have to worry about him getting in Founder 50's way on the lead. He jumped much, much better and much straighter in the Irish Arkle than he had done in the Racing Post Novice Chase when he was jumping violently out to the right. He didn't do that at all at Leopardstown the other day. This is back down to just shy of two miles as opposed to the two mile one. Ilete Tom won't mug him late on this time. If Jack times this to perfection, and it's Jack Kennedy, so he will, Founder 50 is an absolutely cracking bet and he will win this, in my opinion. Gaelic Warrior. Unbeaten in five starts going right-handed. He has run seven times left-handed. He's won once. And that was a handicap hurdle. And if you do the time comparison, Fasal Vega finished across the line, beaten 20 lengths behind Ilete Tomp before Gaelic Warrior did. He'll pull up in this race. This is an absolute disaster. Unless Ben Aiken's about to come along and tell me you are wrong, Kennedy, and he's a good thing. What do you think, Ben? Oh, definitely not. No, no, no. Um, I do again. They've got a hood on him first time. Gaelic Warrior. Um, I think you need more than a hood to straighten him out. Probably. Uh, to be, be fair, Can um, you do a second he, Gaelic he operation. A, I don't know what, you could, what you could do, but he, he's massively talented, hugely talented horse. But going left-handed. I mean, he lost the Boodles. As a 13 to 8 favourite by jumping right, that probably cost him. Um, I think it compromised his chances in the Ballymore last year because they kept him covered up for as long as they could to stop him jumping to his right. By then, the winner had gone. Uh, 
jumped right last time out in the two runner field, which was atrocious run from him. As you said, he won that race of the 2023 DRF, but he was a mark of 143. He could have jumped double the amount of times right he did that day. He was going to win just because he was so far ahead. And so, yeah, I'd have massive worries about Gaelic Warrior. It'd have to be a magical hood. It could be a magical hood that might be all he needs to straighten him out, but I'm not going to be backing him to find out if that's what he needs. Um, Ilete Tomps. I think he looks a kind of small horse, and I've not seen him in the flesh. He looks quite small. He looks to really put in an effort to jump his fences, and it kind of seems to lead to scrappy errors and mistakes. Hard place to get away with that, Cheltenham. Um, again, very talented. Grade 1 ball hardened. Nine of his 11 races have come at grade 1 level. I think he's, I think I've got a track query about him. I think he's not quite at home in undulating galloping tracks. Uh, his wins have come... Leperstown, mainly flat, minor undulations, and uh, Thurles undulating, but sharp. Um, so he's four from six, two places at those tracks. He's been beaten at Cheltenham, galloping severe undulations. Limerick, galloping and undulating, and Punchestown, galloping and undulating. Zero from five, two places at those tracks. So I just have a track query about L.A. Ted Thompson, but Good thing is, Ilya Thompson and Gaelic Warrior makes the market. Uh, I actually have a little track read about Finder 50. Um, he has jumped to his right on most of the starts on left-handed tracks. Um, I think he did jump a little bit to his right last time out, but I have I actually have written down in his defence, he jumped straighter as the race developed in the Irish arc last time out. So he, I, I don't have as much concern with him as the other two. Um, so I don't have any negatives, just that query jumping right maybe you'll see what's what's your man uh gaelic warrior jumping his right and go hey, i'll have a bit of that so hopefully not for you guys or, um, or gaelic warrior will make found 50s jumping look straight as a die well yeah well yeah i think you'll make everyone's look straight yeah you could be right um but yeah no i, I get find a 50 i definitely get the appeal with him minor minor query about his jumping it did seem to straighten out as the Irish article developed, but I'm not wanting any of that three for me. I think they're all extremely talented horses, but I actually prefer Hunter Jarn. Um, I think he's unlucky not to be two from two of our fences. F- fell the last on debut when comfortably in control, three lines lead. He looks at his best in January to April. Uh, all his wins have come during these months. Months. If you look at him in January to April, with one or two starts in the current season, he's six wins from six starts. So positives for Hunter Yarn for his own conditions. Also fits the profile of previous William Mullins winners of the race. If you look at Mullins runners in the Arco, age six or seven, and the one last time out, they return five wins and a third from six qualifiers. Hunter Jarn meets those stats, as does Ilate Tom, Il Tomps, to be fair. Um, but yeah, Hunter Jarn, for me, he appeals to me quite a bit. I just think Gaelic Warrior and Ilate Tomps are two, are two, I have niggles, queries, questions about them. Highly, highly talented horses, but I won't be backing either of them. Um, and I get you find a 50 appeal, totally do. But Hunter's yarn for me in the Arco. I think if Elite Tomp was going to win this, Paul will be on board. It, it's not He's not going to just say to Danny Mullins, oh, you know what, Danny, you've got a good rapport with this horse. Sure, I'll let you win the Arco. That's not how this works. If he was going to win, he'd be on board. Um, I think it's a negative that he's not. And also, he's run five times in the month of March and April. He's managed only one place. Maybe he's just better in the winter. Um, and he has come into Cheltenham on the back of a massive effort at the DRF for the last two years and then regressed on the back of that. But hey, Danny Mullins was on this show last week and he was really talking him up and saying, ignore last year's Supreme Novice Hurdle win. Basically saying it wasn't the best of rides. And um, you'll see a better horse in the, in the race in the article, but I don't know. We're all a bit skeptical, I think. Um, found a 50 for LNI, who is going to win the 2024 article, and it's Hunter's Yard, oh, yes. who's the big danger from Ben. There's your reverse forecast box exact as well. Uh, the ultimate handicap chase sees meeting of the waters now 7-2 to two for Mark Walsh. There was a brief rumor he might head to the National on Chase, but no, nope, he's in here. He's a 7-2 to two favorite. Uh, Chianti Classico for David Bass and Kim Bailey, who's got a good record in this race, won it back in the day and has placed 
uh, twice in the last four years, I think, with runners. Six to one, Trelon. I think he's more interesting. And Aiden O'Hara was putting him up on the show during the week as well. Harry Cobden rides for Kim Bailey, 12 to one. Monbeg Genius, 16 to one shot. Manila Crooner for Jordan Gainford. And uh, Gordon Elliott, a 20 to one shot. Ben, we're going to need some stats to unpick the ultimate handicap chase. What have you got for us? Yeah, it's quite a, a solid race for uh, stats profiling. Uh, 14 of the last 15 winners of the Ultima all, well, 14 and 15, not all. 14 and 15 winners had all previously raced at Cheltenham. Uh, had run at least once over a trip further than three miles. Had previously run in a grade one or grade two contest and had nine or less previous handicap chase starts. Uh, 35 of the 60 win and place horses fitted that profile. Horses that did not fit that profile were one from 183. So quite a strong sort of profile. Um, and it's obviously a race that Irish have struggled in recently, something I'm sure we will hear plenty about pre-race. They have been getting closer to landing it again. Uh, they're a third in 2022, a sixth in 2021, sixth in 2022, and they bagged second and fourth last year from only three Irish trained runners in the race. So I feel it's coming around to an Irish win in this race again. Uh, Willie Mullins, as you say, favourite right now, meeting of the waters. Probably also going to hear the lead up to race. Mullins has never won a handicap chase at the festival. Uh, since 2004, he is zero from 41, eight places in handicap chases at the festival. But I think he's getting closer as well. He had four runners in the handicap chases last year. They finished third, fifth of 23, second and tenth. So... I wouldn't be too blindsided by the Mullins stats in handicap chases if you fancy meeting of the wars. I don't personally fancy him. I don't think he's the likely winner. Um, but I do fancy an Irish trained runner. And that is Stump Town for Gavin Cromwell. Now, he has had two previous starts over the channel fences. Uh, a close second in the Kim Muir last season and then a comfortable win on New Year's Day at the track, uh, on the new track, over roughly the same trip as Ultima. Like Gavin Cromwell, I think, really seems to have he's begun to master Cheltenham, I think, uh, as in properly figuring out the types of horses he needs to be targeting at the track, how to prepare them to perfection on the day. Since 2019, if you look at Gavin Cromwell, Irish and French bred, five, six and seven year olds at Cheltenham, you get stats of 11 winners and five placed horses from 26 runners. 42% win strike rate, 62% win and play strike rate, over 88 points returned if you back to money exchanges. Now, if Stump Town fits those stats, he has solid track form. He can navigate a large field. He's at his peak in October to March period. I think he's got a big chance here. So Stump Town is where my head is, head is at right now for the Ultima. Stump Town, I think the Irish are going to get it back. First instance, Dundoyer, I think it would be. Yeah, 2006 for Tony Martin. Yeah, uh, Dandoyer. An ice-cool Ruby Walsh ride. I remember watching that race with a friend of mine who was up to his eyeballs, and gamble responsibly, folks, freaking out at the halfway point and then doing a jig and a dance as Ruby came sailing over the last. Stumptown is available at 9-1 to one currently. I think you might be able to sneak a bit of 10s as well. Ella McNeil, follow that. Thank you, Bryce. Well, I have a stat as well, but it's not as uh, in-depth in as the ones we've just heard. It was one that kind of... I could uh, I could get on with it was 18 of the 23 winners this century came from the first five in the market so um, I don't think you can look too far far away from that um, I'm all for the gopher here uh, fourth in a bet 365 gold cup I think he's very well handicapped I think there's been some pretty shrewd race planning by Gordon here I think he is two pounds off uh, or two pounds lighter off than he was in the race last year he faded into fourth last year and obviously behind some very you know, special horses that we all know, all know and <laughs> know what they've gone on and done now. So uh, the likes of Corrit Rambler and Fast or Slow. So I think that form in itself is is pretty hard to ignore. He's a second seed novice. I think he's still improving. I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. And he, he interestingly, he hosed up in a, a Punchestown charity race um, the last day, not too long ago. And I think that's a nice little sharpener before this race. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go too, too in depth on the form of that race, but um, I think it's interesting to have that little prep run there. And I think Gordon obviously knows how to prepare a horse for a handicap like this. And I'm all over him. I've got one for this. I'm super confident. 
and it's the form line that Ella just mentioned, but it's not the gopher. Mon Bank Genius is an absolute standout here. No way, no chance. He is an absolute standout for this race. Bear, bear with me, right? Let me make the case. John Joe Neal loves this race. He's trained three winners of it in the last 15 years. Wichita Lineman, Alfie Sharon, Holywell. He's had four horses placed in the race. Keen Leader, Carberry Cross, Holywell, and Mon Bank Genius last year. That day, he was third to Carrick Rambler, who would go on to win the Grand National, and Faster Slow, who in his next three starts wins two grade ones and finishes second to Gallop on the Champ in an Irish Gold Cup, where maybe he needed the race. There is nothing of that caliber in this race. Nothing even approaching the level of that class in this race. Since then, he's gone on to be third in the Hennessy or the Coral Gold Cup, whatever the hell we're supposed to call it these days. When John Joe was saying the ground possibly wasn't ideal for him, Poor old, that's all right, Gino, we lost, obviously, but um, Mahler Mission is going to be a serious player in the Grand National, if you listen to John McConnell, and rightly so, by the way. Uh, he has had four runs off a break of 60 days or more, and he has been lapped in every single one of those, which is crucial because that's what happened the last day. They ran him 10 days ago, and he got lapped, but he shaped very well for most of that race. I think he just badly needed it. And they knew they could not win this race if they brought him here fresh. So they've taken him to Kelso, given him a little cider, given him a nice little day out, and now back him up. He's had six runs and four wins off a break of 26 to 35 days. He's never run off this quick a layoff before. But the fact that he's been able to, his all his best form comes in the back of a recent run, which is what he's getting here. Maybe a shorter than ideal prep time, but John Joe knows what he's doing. His best form comes on left-handed tracks. He's one of the highest RPRs in the race. He's one of the highest time form figures in the race. And his sire produced Cheltenham winners, Stay Away Faye, Bally Nagar, The Storyteller, and Beware the Bear, who won the 2019 version of this race. He's only seven pounds higher than he's run in this race last year. And there is no way that the absolute maximum of his capability is 147. He is definitely at least a 150s horse. And he gets first time cheek pieces. This fella wins and i think he's going to be a big gamble on the day as well he you can't knock him out of the frame with a mallet monbeg genius takes the ultima and he's probably my most confident handicap bet of the entire meeting cue him falling out the back of the telly and getting absolutely lapped but i i love him ben you're you're looking you're looking intrigued ben no i can back you up um the so horses that previously won are placed in the same festival race, which he did last year, um, like last 10 years. So I had to dig this out while you were talking. Um, so I, I uncovered this that I think it was a couple, maybe about a month ago, I put out for a free guide to people that read my, my own website. Um, you might have seen it already. Um, anyway, but it's horses that ran at one or placed in the same Cheltenham festival race and are rated no more than £15 below the top-rated horse in the race, which one big genius is. 39 from 269, 15% strike rate, over 400 points profit if you had backed them all. Um, they are very under-backed horses, uh, overlooked horse. They're overlooked quite a bit. Uh, win in place, 87 from 269 qualifiers, 32% strike rate. Um, fifteen percent above expectation. These types run. So that's horses that previously won are placed in the same Channel Festival race, and this year are rated no more than fifteen pounds below the top rated horse. So it's your festival form sort of angle, I guess. Just a bit of a different sort of look at it. But yes, he would fit that. So it's a shout. It's a decent shout, actually. And I agree as well on the. Days since he last run, he definitely needs a run. He is terrible running off a break. He needs to run. Uh, I don't have it at hand, but yeah, he needs a run to get himself going. He also needs a left-handed track. So yeah, okay. I, I hadn't actually seen him myself yet, Emma. That's a shout, I have to say. Well done. It's a good one. Uh, at the Goffer as well, I have to say. He's he's one of the... I like, I like the Goffer, but I... He just never seems to win at three miles. He should be winning at three miles, mm. but he doesn't, and I don't know why. Um, it's an odd one. 
but again, yeah, I, I, he I stays two miles six the, fine. Yeah, I know. I see the appeal with the golfer as well. I think I fancied him last year. Um, I just can't. He just doesn't seem to win over three miles, and it's it's maybe just an anomaly. Maybe the the way they've prepared him this year will help him. I don't know, but I, I can actually I can see the appeal with both your horses. Um, but yeah, Monbeck Genius could be a shout. Emma, I have to say. The price is key here. You're getting a massive double-figure price about a horse who placed in this race last year and has been said, I was thinking more about the fact that horses in this race who ran well in it the year before have got a good record. Ben's able to expand even further on that. The golfer fits that as well, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. And I, with Giovinco yeah, out that's of this, true, yeah. with Giovinco out, the golfer is the one I fear the most, although I, I like Trelen, but I'm, I am petrified of the golfer. But we can't win this race, Ireland. Um, but that being said, in the interest of balance, Ella McNeil did say, no chance! So... Why? Why can why can John Joe's horse not win? I just think how many lengths was he behind Thunder Rock? Forty lengths. I think ten days will just ten days will blow his mind. I I, I just I, I I will be gobsmacked. I think yeah okay fair enough he, he might run into a place but I think to win an Ultima, I think you have to be right. I mean you might be right. Your your argument's very convincing, Emmett. So uh, <laughs> I'm not going to argue too much, but I'm sticking with my pick. <laughs> Thunder Rock had his prime conditions at Kelso, I think. Um, but I don't think it's an unexpected. Well, I suppose he had been running not as well as you guys maybe had hoped, Thunder Rock, but um, it was good to see Thunder Rock win that day. Yeah. He, I, don't, I don't think he's done what he should have, but that were his prime conditions. So in some ways I can kind of see, and Monday Genius did not have his prime conditions because he needed to run. So I, yeah, I can see, I can see why there was a gap between the two that day. Um, interesting. No, that is, but yeah, Ella's horse, the golfer as well. I didn't think that actually fits that conditions as well. The angle that I just pulled out there. So well, game on. I think I'm, <laughs> I'm on the wrong horse. <laughs> if I've managed to persuade Ben to switch teams, then I've basically... Oh, I'm not switching. Ah, I, damn it. I wouldn't switch from... I'm not switching from Stump Town. Hell no. Um, I can definitely see the appeal of your two horses. Undoubtedly. Get the full episode for free right now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, and all major podcast platforms. Just search Final Furlum Podcast, where you'll get all the naps for Cheltenham, including a hurdler who is still available at a double-figure price who we think will be favorite next week. And if you're still not convinced, according to a recent survey, 110% of Final Furlum Podcast listeners say they are now more confident, happier, and have won more gravy since listening to our show. Just look at all these happy people. They were depressed and had lost all hope until they started listening to the Final Furlum Podcast on Spotify, TuneIn, and Apple Podcasts. Just look at this guy. He was broke and had to get the bus every day until he won a lucky 15, tipped on the Final Furlum Podcast. Now he drives past the bus he used to run for. You're welcome, Charlie. That could be you. Subscribe now to get the full episode of the Final Furlum Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, and all major podcast platforms. Survey referred to in this voiceover may very well have been complete bullshit. The actors featured in this video may very well be paid actors who have never listened to the Final Fallen podcast. None of the horses tipped are guaranteed to win. Satisfaction is most certainly not guaranteed. Terms and conditions apply. Batteries not included. Ask your doctor if the Final Fallen podcast is right for you.